theater is, is about community and putting on a production is about community and every single person is important. Uh, arts is so important and should be accessible to everybody and not have blockers like money, access, time. And then when people come to see the show, they have no idea what goes into it. Like, they have no clue. Hello and welcome to the Theater Art Life podcast sponsored by ClearCom. ClearCom is the leader in voice communication since 1968 for theater and the performing arts. When the show must go on, ClearCom is there to keep the team on cue. The Theater Art Live podcast puts the spotlight on those who create live entertainment around the world. The culture creators and the backstage masters. My name is Kat Landry. And my name is Anna Robb. Today we are joined by Anatoly Norland and Nicole Lippi, talking all things actor, production and theater management. Actors Pocket Guide was created in 2018 when a frustrated theatre director, Nicole, and technology expert, Anatoly, came together and decided to build their own platform to solve organisation, preparation and communication issues with producing theatre. Nicole is the artistic director and founder of A Work of Heart Productions, as well as a co-founder of Actors Pocket Guide. For eight years, A Work of Heart Productions has been producing shows throughout New Jersey and New York City. Since its creation, Nicole has produced over 30 off-Broadway shows in New York City with professional actors and singers. Anatoly has a background in building enterprise tech and automating business processes to run more efficiently. In Anatoly's current role for a leading CPG retailer, he has automated more than 10,000 manual work hours and generated $500,000 plus in savings using technology to solve business operations problems. Anatoly envisioned Actors Pocket Guide after watching Nicole spend hundreds of hours producing shows and then spending hundreds more on administration around them. APG is raising awareness within the theater community to what's possible outside of the same routine for companies looking to engage and grow their programs while reducing budget and overhead. APG is currently working with theater programs in 30 plus states, including several internationally. Actors Pocket Guide is available for free on iOS, Android, and through your web browser at actorspocketguide.com. Welcome to the show. Hi, so glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. This is so exciting. It's amazing. So tell us a little bit about Actors Pocket Guide and what drove you to create this. Yeah, so as you know, with any type of theater production, they last a long time. Uh, right? Uh, rehearsals can go on for months where you're meeting for days at a time for hours with so many people. And it's very hands-on. It's very people-based. Uh, I'd see Nicole in rehearsal help, helping out where I can, communicating with people, putting all of this heart into the production, and then all of the work afterwards. In, in my full-time job, uh, when we see people working in their you know business to make everything better uh, we try to help with technology and i thought there are solutions for this uh, so we tried looking at the different tools that are out there uh, you know project management tools communication tools but uh, didn't really seem to be the right fit right nicole over the years we tried qu- quite a bit of tools until we decided to give it a shot building our own I think the biggest thing, too, with producing a show is communication. (laughs) So, you know, sending emails and getting in touch with people. And it was just so complicated getting in touch with so many different people from different walks of life. And so we tried using Basecamp, which is a great app. That's the one that we started using for a while. And it was like a click. We kind of realized, okay, this is what our app should be. Just a way that actors can communicate yeah. A platform where we can put documents, share files, share files, do all these things. Cause it was just, it was just getting to be so much. And there was no tool that really specifically worked for actors. So it was nice because we were able to implement a tool that is specifically for actors and for theater people, for even film too. Yeah. And as, as you can imagine, uh, even spending 15 minutes in a rehearsal looking for a document Uh, or somebody showing up late because they missed an email or weren't included on an email when you're scrambling to CC 50 people that are in your cast can really impact that time. And we really hope our tool helps with 
all of the administration automating that manual effort and uh, repetitive things that technology is really meant to be used for, uh, giving the cast and production team the ability to focus on the production and improving the process rather than the administration around it. That's awesome. So what actually are some of the tools that make this app unique to the theater and entertainment world? What are the features that people can use? When you first sign up, you create your show space. Uh, Your show space is your home for all of your production files. Uh, You invite all of the participants uh, or your, your cast and crew. You can then assign everybody's title or role. So everybody's aware of who people are in your production. You can set up your profile where you can see people's experience, background, other productions that they've been in. You can also set up your schedule, upload your files. We currently support tracking your conflicts. As people in theater know, uh, conflicts are really important. If your lead is out, then that can completely interrupt your rehearsal flow and needing to rearrange your schedule to stay on top of everything uh, to have that best rehearsal possible. We also have rehearsal reports. Uh, We know that's a very common thing that people do, taking notes on the fly, then sharing them afterwards. We have that integrated into our platform, so you can take notes on the fly and automatically share them with all of the people that are invited to your show. The chat functionality is a big one. Um, There's a chat functionality where people can just easily message each other, which is really nice you know, creating that community because theater is is about community and putting on a production is about community and every single person is important. Going back to even the conflicts, if one person can't make it one day, it affects every single person in the show, regardless of the size of the role that you have. Yeah, so I think really based, really basing things off of this community mentality and how important community is within the theater and how every single person is important. Yeah. So, so that's roughly our current state now. Uh, we have a very robust roadmap that we've put together over the past couple of years of building the platform. Uh, we're currently actively in development. And that's one of the wonderful things about the theater community is that so many people are so hands-on mm-hmm. and willing to contribute their feedback. Lots of people in the space are teachers. Even outside of teaching in the production and running a program in the educational system, right? A lot of people are teachers that teach other classes. So they're very used to using tools and putting in that time themselves to do that research and envision how they can make their classroom better. So we've been very fortunate to work with a lot of the partners that have used our platform to give very great feedback on ways we can improve the tool to better fit this community And uh, yeah, we're we're working on raising funding, which has also been very exciting, Uh, had some great traction and have a lot of exciting things on the horizon uh, where we'll be able to support the full life cycle of producing a theatrical production, not only from the production management, but also supporting actors that are looking to get involved and uh, access information We know there is a lot of knowledge silos where people are disconnected from the resources that they need, uh, whether it's money for expensive classes or not necessarily having the connections. Performing arts can be a very uh, network-based industry and enabling people to have access to the information they need and the tools to take advantage of that and make it work for you is really how we see this ending. Or not, well, ending it, it'll never end. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what, what we hope to get to is a, a tool that makes it easier for everybody involved in that process. Well, it sounds like you're on track for, for basically an end-to-end solution for administrative tasks within theater producing, which is very cool. I'm interested to know, of, of the tools that you developed for this program, are there things that you thought maybe would be used less than you see them being used or the other way around, like things that uh, you you thought would be uh, really heavily used that are actually, you know, being being used less than say, you mentioned the chat function actually turned out to be um, quite a quite a integral part of this program. Were you surprised by what happened when you actually put it in the hands of users? 
it would be good for Nicole to start. Myself being the the technology person, product owner, uh, I kind of fit the the question that you're asking of uh, once you come up with the idea, how do people actually use it? Exactly. Uh, what, what, yeah. what, what's that experience like? And uh, N- Nicole Nicole's on the receiving end of that, where uh, she's been. Uh, beta and alpha tester zero. Uh, a lot of our tool has been modeled around her production company. Uh, so, N- Nicole, uh, are there any ways that you've been able to take advantage of the tool? And I'm, I'm happy to add to that afterwards uh, with, with some feedback. Something that I'm learning is that every single company and every single person really runs things completely differently, <laughs> which is really cool to see, just to see what some people use, like you said, with the functionality. Um, For me, I use the chat functionality a lot. I work a lot with kids and parents and things change all the time. Kids get sick (laughs) and call out at the last minute. So a lot of times it's last minute changes. A uh, Haley can't come to rehearsal tonight because she has COVID. (laughs) So we have to switch around the entire schedule. Some people are a lot more rigid Um, and are really, really, really stick to their events schedule. Like some people just have such a really, really clear rehearsal schedule that nothing really ever changes or pivots. I feel like I'm pivoting all the time based on the people in my orbit. So I think something that people used a lot that I was surprised about was their really detailed rehearsal schedules. (laughs) Like ridiculously detailed. Like they make these plans way before the rehearsals even start, which is really great. They're very organized. I'm more of a roll with the punches kind of person. I kind of feel people out throughout the process. So I guess that's a big thing. People's really, really organized events over detailed events beforehand. For me, I overuse the chat functionality. I feel like I'm using that constantly. <laughs> We've seen from other companies what people have done. But- yeah, and that's... Uh, so all of this has really been an exciting part of the development process. First, you come up with the spec of how you think something will go. Uh, Then you get feedback from people on how they think they'll use it. Uh, And then after you build it, you see how people actually use it. It's trial and error, too. Like, you have this great idea in mind. Like, even you you showing your app for um, the time zones, like, it seems to create something so simple is so complicated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning yeah. so much about that with just technology. It's so, it's it's fascinating, yeah. you know? It, and it's been, uh, you know, a, a, as we've talked about, uh, it, envisioning how that life cycle of a production goes can happen so many different ways. And uh, some of the things we found even from the get-go uh, as we built this platform around how Nicole runs her company and then getting feedback from other companies and then implementing those changes has had downstream effects for other people where they say, oh, this doesn't necessarily work for me. Uh, the, the permissions around how I structure my events are more like this. That's something we always try to keep in mind taking that idea and fitting it fitting it into the bigger picture, but still giving people the flexibility to create their own experience, giving people the tools to manage their production, but not telling them how to manage their production and allowing them to really create their own experience. Like Nicole said, we have a very robust calendar functionality where you can go in, you can create rehearsal reports, people get automated reminders, so you don't need to send those emails. Uh, A lot of people still like to use Excel. Excel in itself is probably one of the best pieces of software that's been created and, you know, at at this point, maybe 25 years ago, but uh, it's still uh, amazing. And we see people that as Nicole mentioned, create their full calendar with detailed notes of who's in, uh, invited to rehearsal, what they're covering. And we see people who don't do that at all and maybe just create a spreadsheet where they keep all of that information. We see people who are using the rehearsal reports to track all of that information, uh, have those files get saved in the library where everybody can access them. And we've seen people who create Google Docs and link those with the rehearsal notes and then assign tasks to their entire cast saying, mark this task complete when you've reviewed the rehearsal notes. 
So it's really been uh, amazing to not only get the feedback from people, but also seeing how people are adopting the tool for themselves and having that guide our development and growth moving forward, kind of molding around the industry instead of trying to mold the industry to us. And now a note from our sponsor. The Theater Art Life podcast is proud to be sponsored by ClearCom. ClearCom is the leader in voice communication since 1968 for theater and the performing arts. When the show must go on, ClearCom is there to keep the team on cue. You can find them at C-L-E-A-R-C-O-M dot com. Go check them out. Yeah, and I think it's definitely the industry where people want to do things the way that they want to do things, right? So, And it's quite interesting that that a lot of the initiatives or platforms in which evolve come from you know people like yourself who go well technology is moving forward and I need technology to help me with my processes so let's build something because there's not a overarching entity doing it for us right so the question that I want to ask is so you decided to to create this and and you've obviously got a partnership that allows that to be conducive one who's got the tech background and one who's got the artistic background so in, in terms of people who might like to start this kind of initiative, is that something that you raised funding? You mentioned funding before. Did you raise funding to get that or did you do a certain amount of groundwork to build it up yourself um, on your own time? What, what was the roadmap to making this a reality? Initially, uh, I came up, for, uh, came up with the idea for Actors Pocket Guide when I was uh, working at a job that in a moment became very frustrating as we all know, little changes can have big impacts. And uh, I was relocated to working at another location for our company that required me to drive an hour and a half each way uh, in traffic. Uh, So I started listening to a lot of entrepreneurial and startup podcasts, how I built this, things like that, where people would talk about uh, finding those seeds of ideas that lead into businesses and really looking for that purpose and fulfillment. As I was listening to these different podcasts, being stuck in traffic, being frustrated, uh, I was thinking, you know, what exists in my orbit that I can make a difference with, or difference in with my background and skill set. And that was around the same time that uh, I was trying to help Nicole with different tools for her business, thinking about how we can make things easier. And we really saw that, Uh, the theater and performing arts industry ticked a lot of those boxes. So much of the industry was made out of paper. Uh, You have your script, you have your rehearsal notes, you have uh, manual follow-ups, so many repetitive tasks, a lot of people involved. And uh, so we started working together at nights. As I'm sure Nicole can tell you, the beginning part of the idea was was so hard. (laughs) Hundreds of hours of sitting there and uh, mapping out and writing out notes and uh, layouts and formats and plans. And I mean, uh, maybe you could speak to that. Uh, I know so so many evenings of coming up with notes that uh, seem like such a relic to where we are now. But uh, we've been bootstrapping the platform ourselves. So from the beginning, we found a partner to work with, a partner that uh, was happy to invest in our idea. Uh, So uh, we've been paying out of pocket for development. With starting any type of business, it's definitely a a sacrifice and a labor of love. So the, the hope is that you get to a place with traction to get that support from different partners in the industry who can help support that idea. Uh, So for quite some time, uh, we founded the platform in 2018, uh, have rebuilt it twice and pivoted to where we are now. I'd say only now are we really in a place to get that outside investment uh, now that we have a a clearly defined roadmap, traction, uh, support from community partners, professional partners. Uh, Yeah, it's, it's been quite a journey and uh, re- requires a lot of uh, investment from yourself of not only time, but uh, money where possible. Well, having started Theatre Out Life platform myself and done it, I know exactly the journey. So <laughs> it's, it's, and like you said, I don't think you always imagine how many, how much work it's going to be to get it across the line. Like you have the idea and the motivation to do it. And like you said, I love what you just said before. 
the initial sketches is nothing what it is like now, but you got to start somewhere, right? And you learn through the process. And I think that's that's the beautiful part about creating something yourself is is um, really being married to how it evolves and and listening to the demographic of people who are going to use it, which has always been my remit for the plat- our platform as well. Go where the audience want it to be and 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 evolve with it. And something that you even saying that going with what the audience wants, something that's really important that I've learned is putting your ego aside <laughs> and being and being open to constructive criticism, you know, and I, I'm, I'm a highly sensitive person. So, you know, uh, we we get messages from people being like, this isn't working or this is this is I, I blah, blah, blah. It needs to be like this. And I get so sensitive. <laughs> so good at it being being so objective and not having any ego yeah. it's like yeah but that's what this is it's trial and error things are not going to work and that's okay coming from working with people in the <laughs> financial services industry managing billions of dollars uh you know s- screaming at you because their uh, trading platform isn't working and there's five minutes before millions of dollars are impacted uh that c- kind of have become numb to criticism uh, of, <laughs> of, of that sort and uh, really understanding where it's coming from and being able to turn that into actionable results uh, where uh, and uh, completely understanding where Nicole's coming from too. Uh, p- performing arts and theater are all about the emotion <laughs> uh, and people are so passionate and fiery and uh, believe in the, you know, the work that they're doing. And uh, we, we understand the, the impact that, uh, a bug can cause to rehearsal. In our early days, for example, we had some permission problems where, right, you know, what's the use of a communication and collaboration tool if half of your people are locked out at rehearsal? So I, I can completely understand where those frustrations come from and why they're there, but it, it can still be jarring. Uh, f- fortunately, we've made it through a lot of those pain points, but it's it's been a, a beautiful journey and uh, ro- roll with the punches. So, who are your clients now? Um, who who make up the majority of the folks using this app? Have you noticed any trends? Are there specific corners of the industry that make more use of it, or that have heard about it and are kind of starting to implement it into their process? It's been a lot of high school theater directors and high school oh, programs. Great. Which is so that nice. Makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. So it's been a lot of educational theater, which is, like I said before, when you're dealing with kids, there's there's one uh, workspace, show space, I see all the time on the chat, I'm sick, I can't come today. You know, you're, you're dealing with high schoolers, you know, that are, have crazy schedules. So yeah, that's been, that's, pretty much the majority of people, right, Anatole, of people using the app, like educational high school theater programs. Yeah, and uh, in, in its current state, uh, the, the biggest value is really to the director and producer and managers of yeah. the company, uh, because they're the ones who are really putting in all of those hours of time, wrangling Google Drive to store and share files, sending those emails uh, before rehearsal, letting people know, and then afterwards giving those notes out. Uh, right? I mean, the people in the production could probably care less where they get that information from. They just care that they get it. So uh, that's really where we've seen people use it. Uh, so that's what we're, who, who we're focusing on now, uh, getting those directors and producers, because that brings their company of people with them and helps us build our community and audience. Uh, as we scale uh, we aim to provide, uh, you know, services for uh, the individual too. Uh, so having that learning management component where we can connect people with that information that they're looking for. Uh, I know one of our partners mentioned uh, if they had a learning module that they can assign for something like projection. Uh, you know, let's say you're in rehearsal and you have a, a group of cast members who uh, are struggling with that. Instead of having to take that time himself to spend 15, 20 minutes uh, right on these couple people that would take away from everybody else, 
and assign a learning module where they can come back later and say, oh, I completed this and I'm ready to go, uh, not only helps the director of the production, but the performers themselves. Uh, so th that's uh, where we hope to end up. But r right now, as Nicole mentioned, primarily high school uh, programs uh, and those directors and producers and stage managers. Especially in the in those communities where you don't necessarily have a stage manager and the people directing the show are often, you know, teachers themselves. It's nice to have kind of an all in one administrative tool. That's that makes a lot of sense that that's where it's ended up. And a lot of work for very little, you know, these people get paid nothing. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. volunteer time and don't even get a stipend, mm -hmm. you know, and are working small budget. So that's been really nice. I feel like at least I don't know. If Anna, I know Anatole feels this way too. We feel like we're helping the community, which is really nice. And we feel like we're really giving back, which is a nice thing. A lot of educators have been in touch with us and have been like, this has been a lifesaver for me. And that feels really good. Because that's, oh, that's the purpose so of doing <laughs> Helping people and giving back. That's the point yeah. of it. It's never about money, really. As I'm sure you'd agree, uh, with, with all the different types of funding and uh, investments that happen in the world, uh, so little goes to arts. A lot of people think that there's... have forgotten about. <laughs> yeah, pe pe people think that there's no money in the arts, uh, but, but the it's really that there's no money going in, but there's a lot of money going out. Uh, people spending money to really pursue what they love. And that was really the, the mission of Actors Pocket Guide, to make arts more accessible to remove those barriers to entry and make it easier for uh, administrators and people who are giving up their time, which they don't really have much of. What was the one app that Brian was using? And he said it cost like $900 a month. Yeah. So uh, one of our partners, uh, Brian, uh, he built his uh, a version of Actors Pocket Guide using uh, a Google form that was connected to Trello, that was connected to macros that would do different things. And uh, we, we've seen similar platforms that charge a lot of money and uh, we haven't monetized yet because we see that as a barrier to entry. Uh, a, a lot of programs and teachers running them really don't have that extra money to Why spend. Why spend $900 on an app when you need that for costumes or you need that for a set? Or you, you well, know, for sure, wow. for sure. Yeah. And like you said, that when you're trying to budget a production at that sort of low budget, tech is not what you're going to spend your money on. You know? oh, but absolutely not. the work okay. still needs to be manifested and the oh, organization has to be still manifested. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always in such admiration given arts is our full-time job for people to teach drama or whatever and then produce a show on the side i mean <laughs> that's dedication right <laughs> and then when people come to see the show they have no idea what goes into it like they have no clue they have no clue yeah you know and that's the beauty of it too. that's the beauty of it too to make something look really beautiful to make something look great it should look effortless it really should you know so it is a labor of love in so many ways it, and that's the 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 origin of the name of Nicole's company, a work of heart productions. So much of that, uh, you know, work is a work of heart. Uh, people doing because they care. Uh, people wanting to give back to the community, knowing the importance of the arts and the impact that it can have for uh, not only children, uh, since we're talking about education and uh, you know the, the teachers, but humanity in general. Uh, arts is so important and should be accessible to everybody and not have blockers like money, access, time. So we're, we're really working to provide that accessibility and ease of use. So it's no longer, you know, oh, this is going to take me this much time. And if I don't do it, it's going to make this worse. But making it easier for people to have the access to all of that and the benefits. That's another thing I think that's cool, like meeting with different educators and producers and directors, seeing how much they really do care and how much they love what they do. Like this one partner of ours that we said, another educator from Ohio, he's literally writing emails at four o'clock in the morning because he cares so much about his, about his students. He cares so much about his program. Those kids don't know that he's writing emails at 4 a.m. They don't know that. But he doesn't care. Like, he loves them so much and he loves what he does so much. 
And that's been a really inspiring thing for me on my end, just really seeing the love that goes into what these people do. And it's really cool and beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, teachers are amazing. And I think that, you know, it, I, I so agree with you about the the fact that arts arts is for me is quite essential, especially for children as they grow, you know, to see the world from different perspectives and to understand and how to look at the world from an artistic way or an artistic place is is so important. And it's such an intangible metric. I think that's why people have it. It's easy to squash a budget in the arts because the, the metric of success is very hard to measure, right? And it's the same thing when uh, how much is that going to cost? And uh, what, what, what's it going to generate? Uh, how much? How many? And what, what what's that going to do for us on paper? Oh, oh, I, oh I, get, I get all that other stuff, but what's, what is it actually going to do? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, even on a macro scale, like on a larger scale in, in a professional world, it, I have those same conversations all the time. Investors might understand you buy a light and you ship a light and you hang a light and you program a light and you've got a lighting design, right? They understand that. But you get a bunch of artists and you put them in a room and I want them there for six weeks. Well, why can't it be two weeks? No, but I need them for six weeks. And they're like, why can't it be two weeks? And to argue why I need six weeks and two weeks, because obviously six weeks is more expensive than two weeks, it's it's a hard thing for people who are, especially now because, you know, historically a lot of government funding, a lot of funding for the arts came from the government and there's this shift globally from, government funding to corporate funding right so the corporate industry wants to know what where their money's going and they want it to be accountable which is fair because they're putting money into it but there's a lot of justification in that space of how long is a piece of string of creativity right it's it's the never-ending argument i love to have that argument but it's a it's a never-ending argument because i i have faith and we all know that you know, us sitting in this podcast group understand the benefits of arts because it fills us up, you know, um, and it gives us purpose and drive and those teachers purposes and drive. But uh, how do you how do you label that and monetize that is another thing, you know? Oh, totally. Yeah. And uh, I feel like uh, the arts in particular get a lot more scrutiny to those numbers and metrics, too. Uh, It's so easy for corporations that are uh, driven by profit and, uh, you know, KPI uh, metrics of if I invest five hours of labor at this working rate uh, provides this much output. Uh, h- how do you apply that to your production? Uh, what, are, what are the <laughs> economic metrics of uh, the amount of love that you put into one student and one rehearsal? Uh, how, how many tickets is that going to get for the, the audience who's going to see your programs? So uh, c- can completely understand uh and uh, to, to what you mentioned with uh, government funding versus corporate, uh, I feel like with government funding, uh, a lot of that is very mission driven of we would like to see this outcome in this area where corporations really want to see that direct impact because that's how corporations are run. Uh, so facing a lot more scrutiny in those areas, I mean, uh, especially living in such a data driven world, uh, everybody's looking for that hard data, that measurable input versus output. And uh, it, it, it's funny, I know, uh, with the work that I do, working in automation and improving business processes, that's the, a lot of the modeling that we do. Here's how many hours in rehearsal, X, uh, two, three rehearsals a week, X, this many people, X, the, these many follow-ups equals this much time. And a lot of people just don't believe those numbers. Uh, sometimes when you multiply out the math, they think that it's so unbelievable. Uh, I've had people tell me, you know, th- there's no way these numbers are are real. You walk them through. I mean, w- one business process that I've automated professionally is uh, new hire onboarding. Uh, as a, a new employee joins an organization, uh, it, it takes this long to get through HR, this long to get through security, this long to get through accounting. And mapping out the time saved in each of those processes and then multiplying that by the number of employees you onboard. And uh, I was was told the same thing, you know, this is outstanding. There's no way that this is how long this takes and what this would save. And, you know, you walk them through the math again. Like, well, we onboard 100 employees a month, right? Okay, okay. Uh, It takes this long to onboard, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the math. And they tell you it's wrong. And 
so even though the data is there uh, professionally and in the performing arts where it's h- even harder to look at the numbers, like you said, it, it's a game of cat and mouse. And uh, all, all we can do is keep, keep trying and knowing that the return on investment is there, even if it's not uh, tangible for everybody. That's amazing. The one thing I'm curious about is whether your goals have changed from basically that initial idea to now, now that you've seen it in practice um, and you have kind of an idea of what direction you want it to go in, has has there been much of an evolution in your in your goal that you started this out with? Or do you feel like maybe maybe it's the exact same and you've remained true to that objective this whole time and that's fabulous too i'm just curious what you know has there been any any change in your feeling about where you want it to go is it are you still sticking to the to the very same feeling that you had when you came up with it in the first place i guess the goal has always just been to help <laughs> make things easier and i think that's I think that's something that we're still that we're still doing, making things easier, but just listening to other people. Like we said before, working with other people and listening to what they need and what they want. I guess, yeah, just continuing that objective to help make things easier. Yeah, and w- w- when we uh, first came up with the idea for the platform, uh, it, it was really because w- we saw the signs of a need in the space. Uh, right, uh, people in the arts looking to connect easier, uh, to spend less money, to get more value out of what they were doing, to save that time managing a production. And uh, when so when we first built our tool, uh, we, we knew that idea and purpose was there, uh, but it was more content based. Uh, so building a platform for students mm-hmm. to connect with professional performers. And being able to ask them questions for professionals to share the work that they're doing so that people, uh, students could see what was required and have that access. Uh, That version of our platform uh, didn't necessarily make life easier. Uh, It introduced more work, uh, right? You know, you have a content platform, you have to create content, you have to focus on the marketing, you have to focus on the engagement, which added work, but didn't necessarily make things easier. Uh, so we kind of took a step back and pivoted uh, and re-architected our platform to save time and more so uh, be aligned with that life cycle of production. So setting up your show, managing your calendar, communicating with people, uh, getting access to the knowledge that you need. So still serving those same goals of making it easier to run your production, being able to connect with those professional people. But now that step is coming later. We're building our audience by having this tool that makes it easier to run your production, which generates the audience of people who are looking for access to that, uh, providing that foundational purpose, that uh, actual value add, where it's making it easier to run your company. And in our next phase, we'll uh, build out that learning management, uh, being able to connect all of the you know, people who are working professionally that have that experience and are looking to give back and connect with the industry, but the audience will already be there. So, uh, y- y- yes and no. <laughs> uh, Easier, still, cheaper, still more efficient. With those same goals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and it's taking quite a bit of money to get there, but, uh, a, a labor of love and we know that it's all been worth it. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Awesome. So we always finish our podcast with the same two questions. So the first one is, and either of you could answer this, is what is the most favorite thing about your job or the industry that that you could speak of? I've been I've been binge watching Orange Is the New Black while I've been up all night. I don't know if you guys have watched it, (laughs) but I've seen uh, seen the first series. First uh, first uh, series. Yeah, I think so. I've been watching it because it's such a binge worthy thing. Anyway, um, at the beginning of the show, one of the first episodes, one of the characters talks about the mandala and how you create something beautiful and then it just all washes away when it's done. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about what I do, creating something beautiful and then just tearing it all down and doing it all over again. And I think that's been a big part of 
this process of building this app, putting so much heart and soul into building something. And if it doesn't work, you just tear it all down, but you can't have any regrets. You have to, you have to just keep going and keep building and keep growing. And I think that's the arts too, creating something beautiful and then washing it all away, but not having any regrets, just keep moving forward. Man. It, it, and I'd say, Oh, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Or just thank you, Genji Cohen. That was, that was from you. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, Anatoly? And I'd say seeing how much people care and mm-hmm. making it easier to allow them to do what they want to do and expand that outreach, doing more with less. Uh, like, like we've been saying, so much of arts is a labor of love, a labor of heart, and not having those resources to really make that impact. So uh, seeing how much people care and how far people are willing to go in their own way, in their own process, uh, has really been eye-opening. And being able to help people accomplish their mission has been the the best part of all of this. Uh, Seeing people's productions happen and uh, knowing that we were able to help them Maybe not spend, well, I guess spend less time, but uh, focus their time where it's better served. Yeah, that's a good goal. And besides the improvements that you are already working to make in the industry, if you could change one thing about the industry, what would that be? I guess like we were even talking about before, apathy, getting more people to really care and see the benefits of the arts. And how it really does change people's lives, gives people confidence, it gives people purpose, like we've said before. I guess for more people to see that and to to make arts a little, maybe maybe not mainstream, but just to get people to really see what goes into it and how it does change, how it could change the world too. It, and not seeing arts as a separate area, but arts as a part of every area. Uh, a, a quote that we use a lot is uh, our biggest competitor is apathy, uh, where people are so resistant to change, uh, whether it's uh, in the arts or just in general, uh, people don't necessarily want to change what they're doing or how they're thinking or how they're feeling, because uh, often the unknown is scarier than any perceived possible benefit. Uh, so ha- having people really open their eyes to what's possible. And getting people to do that change uh, it exists not only in the arts, but everywhere. Like Nicole said, people really ingraining the arts into what they're doing and not seeing it as something that needs to be done. There's art in everything. Yeah, that's amazing. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's it's been such a pleasure to meet you and, and hear about your mission with Actors Pocket Guide and, and just meet you both personally. Thank you so much, Anatoly and Nicole, for joining us on the Theatre Art Life podcast. It's been wonderful to have you. Thank you so much yeah, for likewise. meeting with us and for listening and for having this wonderful platform. This was really great. Yeah. Thank you again. Need help planning your production? We're here to help. We know a lot goes into putting on a successful show. Whether you are creating or rehearsing for a theatrical production, Actors Pocket Guide is here for you. Our platform allows you to create a show space, which is a home for your rehearsal calendar, production files, and more. Once your show is set up, you can relax knowing your cast has one place to quickly access everything before, during, and after rehearsals. Actors Pocket Guide is accessible via mobile app or website actorspocketguide.com. Now remember, break a leg, not your back. Theater at Life is a global media site for entertainment. Memberships start at only 38 US dollars per year. You can have unlimited access to our daily published articles, including entertainment news and the writings of active industry professionals, ensuring that you are always up to date on the global happenings in the world of entertainment. Become a part of the international entertainment community and join us now at www.theaterartlife.com.